In John 10, verse 10, the word of God says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So the question then is, how can you apply these to your life, your marriage, and your relationships? Because the truth be told, if you are able to cover these three areas of your life, you will have a better life, you will have a better marriage, and you will have a better relationship. Let's have this conversation coming right up. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm not gonna go into all that introduction and all that stuff. Listen, man, if this channel is adding some value to your life, if the content that we're sharing on this channel, it's helping you, then by all means, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, you know, share and like the video. Let's get right into it. The Word of God tells us the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, who is this thief that Jesus was talking about? Jesus was talking about the devil. He is the enemy of God's people. The enemy has three avenues of attack. I want you to hear me. The enemy has three avenues of attack. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy the saints of God. Now, how does this apply to life, marriage, and relationship? Number one, he wants to steal our resources. Yes, you heard me right. The devil wants to steal our money. Whether you're married or whether you're single, this is an area that the enemy wants you to be delinquent in. He wants you to be incompetent in the area of managing your money and your finances. As a married couple, he wants you to have money problems. Financial issues and money problems are the second cause of divorce in this country. I believe it is the second cause of divorce in the world. Infidelity is number one, and the cause of money issues is number two. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, that the enemy wants us to be broke. God tells us to be a good steward of our money. The word of God tells us to owe no man nothing but to love one another for he that loveth one another fulfill the law. Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. Proverbs 22 and verse 7 tells us that the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Proverbs 13 and verse 11, it tells us that this honest money dwindles away, but whoever gathered money little by little makes it grow. Exponential growth happens over a period of time. It doesn't happen just like that. It takes time. Proverbs 10 and verse 4 tells us that lazy hands makes poverty. Diligent hands brings wealth. Now, if you're married, you and your spouse finances should not be jacked up at all. I'm just saying. The two of you guys should not have money problems. The two of you guys should not have bad credit at the same time. As a matter of fact, you should not have bad credit at all. But man, you know, in marriages, two people are not always on the same level playing field when it comes to your spiritual life, when it comes to money. We're not always equal. Maybe one is a little bit better than the other. In most relationships, that's how it works. But Jesus Christ, both of you guys can't be broken having money problem or mismanaging your money. That is just crazy. God doesn't want us to argue over money, especially if both of you guys are making good money. See, most couples look good on paper. Most people in relationship looks good, but they're broke. They drive nice cars, but they can't pay their bills on time. And the sad thing that most of these people are Christians. That is not how God wants us to live. The devil wants to steal from you. It is not just your money that he wants to steal. The devil wants to steal your ability to gain wealth. He wants to steal your resources. He wants to steal your job. He wants to put you in a position where you're destitute. It is amazing that some of y'all buy things that you can't afford with money that you don't have to impress people that you don't even like, people that doesn't care about you. He wants you to borrow other people's money. He doesn't want you to be an investor. He doesn't want you to be a business owner. He wants you to have lack because he know if you have lack in money, it create chaos in your life. It create chaos in your marriage. It create marital problems. He wants you to become a slave to another man. 
God does not want you to be a slave to your money. He wants you to be a master of it. Am I helping somebody? Jesus said that if you be faithful over a few things, I am going to make you ruler over many. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 23. Now, how can God allow you to rule more if you're not taking care of what you already have? If you are not a good steward of what you have now, how are you going to get more? God blesses us according to our ability, ladies and gentlemen. How can you get increase if you are wasting what you already have? Money doesn't have power. Money by itself can't do anything. But money in the hand of a good person can do a lot of good things. Money in the hand of a bad person can do a lot of bad things. It's all about your perspective. It's about your mindset. It is about your pattern. It's about the principles that you have concerning money. And that's what the devil doesn't want you to learn. These are things that you need to learn about love, about marriage and relationship. It ain't all about the sex and all of that stuff. It's really about understanding principles of what makes a marriage work. And you're going to get that kind of teaching on this channel. I promise you that. That we're going to bring content that's going to help you to become comprehensive. Holistically, you need to be able to manage all these different areas of your life. And money is one of those areas that most people struggle with. Number two, the enemy wants to kill the physical man. He wants to bring sickness upon your body through the disease process. Now, the truth is, he is not responsible for all the disease people are dealing with. Most diseases are caused by our neglect to take care of our body. We don't eat right. We don't eat the right food that our body really need in order for it to survive and in order for it to not be nourished and replenished. See, what happened is the devil put negative thoughts in your mind about your health, about your body, about how you look, about how you feel. He speak death into us and so we sabotage our own selves by what we say about our body, what we eat. All these different things impact how we live. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. You live at the level in which you speak. Speak positive about yourself. Speak positive about your health. We eat the wrong things that are not healthy for us. Do you know that your health impacts your marriage in a positive or a negative way? Whether you want to believe that or not, it is true. See, when you are healthy, it makes you feel good about yourself. And when you feel good about yourself, it positively impacts your marriage. The same can be said about if you're sick. When you are sick, you feel bad about yourself. And that makes you feel bad about your marriage. You may not be able to have sex with your spouse. You can't go out together. You have to take off from work. You have to be on disability. You know, all these different things impact your finances. It impacts your lifestyle. How many of you are suffering from obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, etc.? A lot of couples take medication for these illnesses and some of the side effects from these medication, it can impact the way you live your life. I know men that have high blood pressure and the medication that they take to lower their, their blood pressure, it also lower their sex drive. A lot of them experience pre-ejaculation and erectile dysfunction because of some of these medications that they're taking. Women and men that suffer from diabetes experience similar things. Diabetes affect both men and women in a bad way. And you know what's interesting about this, guys, ladies and gentlemen? The truth is that sometimes all it takes is for you to change your health, change your habit about your life, about your health. It's about changing how you eat. It's about exercising and do things in moderation. You don't have to go crazy. All you need to do is to get started. Health is wealth. Guys, it is much easier to stay well than to get well. It is time to stop blaming the devil for things that you are responsible for. You need to stop eating deadly food. Sugar is the devil. It's not healthy for you. It is killing you slowly and it is killing you softly. By the time you realize it, you're sick. If it is going to be, it is up to you.
There are too many resources and information out there for you to make excuses about having a better health. Let, let's do better about this. Help yourself. Guys, listen, a better lifestyle, better health often leads to a better marriage. It leads to a better attitude. God wants us to prosper and be in good health even as our soul prosper. See, this body is the temple that carries you. This body carries you. You are a spiritual being that is in a physical body. How you treat your body determines exactly how you live your life and exactly what you are going to accomplish here in the earth. And some of you guys prematurely stop your progress, stop your blessing, stop where you could have been, how far you could have gone because of bad health. God wants you to live a healthy life. How you treat your body depends on how successful your life will be. And that, my friend, includes your marriage. The third thing the enemy tried to do, he wants to destroy your relationship. The first relationship he's after is your relationship with God. He wants to destroy your relationship with God. He doesn't want you to have a good relationship with God because he knows that your relationship with God will help you to be better in every other aspect, in every other areas of your life. He is a destroyer of relationships. The devil understand that the vertical relationship, the God to man, the man to God relationship is the most important relationship of all relationships. If your relationship with God is not right, it affects every other relationship that you have. When God created Adam, the first thing that he did was put Adam in the Garden of Eden and he had a relationship with Adam. The Bible said that the Spirit of God would visit him at the cool of the day. Ooh, when is the last time the Spirit of God visits you? When is the last time you pray until you feel the presence of God? Your vertical relationship is first. It is God to man, man to God. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says it best. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all is righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. The next relationship that the enemy wants to destroy, it is the husband and the wife relationship. He is after your relationship. He is after your marriage. Listen, let me break this down to you. See, the devil did not have a problem with Adam being alone. The devil did not have a problem with Adam being by himself. He was fine with Adam being alone, working, having no one to relate to, not having any relationship with anyone. He was comfortable with that. Adam was busy fulfilling God's calling upon his life. He was fulfilling purpose and he was fulfilling his assignment. Notice the devil did not have a problem when you were shacking up. He didn't have a problem when you were having sex with everybody, having sex out of, out of marriage. He did not have a problem when you were living a common law kind of relationship for many years, 10, 15 years together, not married, five years together, no marriage, having children out of wedlock and all that stuff. He never had a problem with that. But when you decided that you are going to get married, when you decided that you and your spouse, you and your boyfriend, you and your girlfriend is going to get into a covenant relationship, when you decided that you are going to become one flesh together in marriage, that is when it seems like all hell break loose. And can I tell you the truth? It did. Because then you start to have some problems in the relationship that you never had before. Then you start to deal with issues and characters and behavior problems that you didn't see coming. Because at that particular time, that's when the devil put a bullseye on your back. Because now you are honoring God and dishonoring his way of living. He never had a problem with Adam. He had a problem when God created Eve. He saw the power of God in a marriage. He realized that marriage looks like God. He recognized that marriage looks like Christ and the church. He saw the reflection of God's love for man and Christ's love for the church in a marriage. Marriage is a threat to the devil because Christ came through a marriage between Mary and Joseph. Jesus came through the womb of a woman. 
Marriage creates godly offspring. I, I hope you guys are understanding this. That is why the devil does not like your marriage. He attacked the first marriage in the Garden of Eden, and he is after your marriage too. He wants the family structure, the family unit, to be dysfunctional. He wants our marriage to end in divorce. Here is a highlight that I want you to get out of this, out of this video. This part I want you to remember, and please don't you ever forget this. There is a but. It changed the whole dynamic of the conversation. It said the enemy comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. In other words, whatever the devil is trying to kill, whatever he's trying to do, God is saying, I come to give you better. If you trust me, God is saying, if you believe in me, if you take me at my word, I can do great things in your life. God is saying, I want to make sure that you're taken care of. I want to make sure that you have good health. I want to make sure that you have money. I want to make sure that your marriage and your relationships are successful. And here's the crazy thing, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is very interesting. This is very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. If you ask for prayer, if you ask your pastor to pray for you, you ask your bishop, your evangelists, your deacons, if you ask your husband to pray for you, you ask your wife to pray for you, if you're asking me to pray for you, whatever you ask for prayer about, it is going to fall under these three categories, your health, your money, and your relationships. And these are the three areas the enemy wants to attack. I pray that you will safeguard yourself. I pray that you will protect your health. I pray that you will protect your money. I pray that you will protect your relationship. Because if you have all of these three things in order, I promise you that you're going to have a better relationships. You're going to have a better life. And so, guys, that's what I want to share with you in this video. I hope that you were blessed by it. May God continue to bless you. Keep trusting in God. Keep believing in God. Keep on working on yourself. Work on your marriage. Build your life. Your best is absolutely yet to come. If this video adds some value to you, we would like you to smash that like button. We would like you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, share and invite people to this channel. Thank you for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.